Hi class, today I'm going to cover Consumption and Savings, pages 89 to 92 in the text. Before now, we've been looking at a one-period model where we plotted food and all other goods. For example, food on the horizontal axis and all other goods on the vertical axis. Now we're going to look at consumption in year one, that would be total consumption on the horizontal axis, and consumption in year two on the vertical axis. Of course, this is a major simplification as we have a lot of things in consumption and there is more than one year to consider. But all said, what happens when we look at this two period model today and tomorrow, it's a good representation of the way consumers might act. So where do we start? Of course we start with our assumptions. The household is at the beginning of year one and is faced with deciding how much to consume today and tomorrow and it will exhaust all its resources. Its total resources include all income it can earn today and tomorrow plus their assets. That's assumption two. And assumption three is the household is a satisfaction maximizing household subject to resource constraints. So that's no different than we've already done. Let's look at our budget constraint. Now we talk about resources in year one being our assets at the beginning of year one, the income I can earn in year one, and the maximum si size of the amount of money that I can borrow today. Notice we have subscripts one, meaning this is all year one. R is total resources. A is assets. Y is earned income. And BM is the maximum loan I can get today. But anything that I borrow today has to be paid back tomorrow. And I have to pay back interest. So the maximum size of the loan is really sorry this is a plus the amount that I can spend plus the interest I have to pay back and that will be equal to income in year two again the maximum size of the loan that I can get with money that I can actually spend is equal to that plus the amount of interest I have to pay back I cannot use interest to consume so if we solve for the maximum size of the loan, we get y2 over 1 plus r. So we can substitute in y2 over 1 plus r in to that equation. And we can rewrite the equation for r1 is equal to the assets I have at the beginning of year one plus the income I earn in year two plus y2 over one plus r. r is the interest rate. I have now stated the total amount of resources in year one in terms of assets, income in year one and two, and the interest rates. Remember we assumed that our household spends all income in our one period model. What if we assume that a household could spend all of its present and future income in one period? What would we have? We would have another way to state R1 is the price of consumption plus the maximum consumption in year one is equal to our total resources. Rearranging 
consumption maximum in year one is equal to the resources in year one over the price of consumption. Now let's think about this. C, as in the maximum I could consume, or my x-intercept being my total resources divided by the price of consumption, a composite price. This is no different than the maximum quantity of food is equal to y over the price of food. Remember, that's how we got the maximum quantity on our x axis. But we've just complicated it a bit by saying resources are not only to your um, equal to your income, it's equal to your income plus your assets plus the amount you can borrow divided by the price of consumption. So let's graph today on our horizontal axis. consumption today and consumption tomorrow. We would say that total resources in year one over the price of consumption gives us the maximum point of consumption today if we actually consumed nothing tomorrow. Let's say you were in the last year of your life, you had no bequest motive or any motive to leave money to your children, you might exhaust all of your resources today by consuming down to the last penny. What are our total resources in time period two? Well, we could look at resources in time period two as being equal to my income in year one plus or my, sorry, my income in year two, plus the interest that I can earn on my income in year one and my assets in year one. So total resources in year two are equal to the income I can earn in year two, plus the interest I earn on the income in year one, plus assets in year one, multiplied by year one income and year one assets. So if I don't spend anything in year one, the total amount of resources I can have are my income in year two plus my income in year one plus assets plus the amount of interest I can earn. So if we said the price of consumption in year two times the maximum I can consume in year two, I once again get one plus r y1 plus A1 plus the income in year two. And C2 max is equal to one plus R, Y1 plus A1 plus Y2 over the price of consumption in year two. That would give me the maximum amount that I can consume in year two. I can connect those two lines or two dots on the horizontal and vertical axis and get my budget line or the maximum amount that I can consume. Now, if I were to figure out what the slope of this line is, I can make some assumptions. Let's assume that P1, C1, the price of consumption in year one equals the price of consumption in year two, and I just call that the price of consumption. So I'm not changing prices through time. We'll deal with that later on in terms of inflation and deflation. But for now, let's just say the price of consumption is a constant through time. And if I were to solve the rise, which is this, over the run, which is R1 over PC, I would see that the slope of the intertemporal budget line, that's this, intertemporal, because I have time in one and time in time period two, it's equal to negative one plus r. And if you really feel like doing the math, you can actually do rise over run, putting these 
uh, variables in and you will derive slope equals negative 1 plus r which means in real life terms or in terms of applying it to your life today the price of consumption through time when prices are constant really involves the interest rate or the price of borrowing or saving through time. So our intertemporal budget constraint or intertemporal budget line where we're looking at consumption in year one and consumption in year two and we're plotting those two points R1 over PC or total resources R2 over PC where each of these can be expanded to be This is what goes in here in this numerator. R2 goes in this numerator. R1 goes in this numerator. And we can say that the slope is negative 1, negative oh, oh, 1 plus R. We can say some things about this particular budget line. Let's look at point B. Let's say point B is Y1 over PC. Point B represents the point of consumption of a consumer who spends only their income in year one. This means by definition that they have some savings because if they only spend their income in year one they will have 1 plus R times their assets plus Y2. over PC in year two. If someone is at point F and point F is equal to A1 plus Y1 over PC, this person does not borrow but simply spends down Y1 plus A1 all of their assets and in year two they will have just Y2 over PC to spend. Anyone who is beyond F to the maximum amount is a borrower. Anyone who is between B and F and has assets is a saver. Not point F though. And anyone here who consumes less than their current income is a saver in year one and can spend more in year two. That's enough for right now. We'll move on to looking at preferences in a moment.